after the earlier performance of the Remington R51, I purchased a second 9mm pistol, which I will now test with a new target. New pistol, this is a Glock 17 Generation 4. This will be the first time this gun has ever been fired. I'll be using 115 grain 9mm silver tips as the first. I'll run through 10 rounds at ease and then switch to a different ammunition. Next ammo to be tested will be what's called a subsonic bullet intended for use in a silencer. This is a 147 grain hollow point subsonic. Not available commercially, available only to law enforcement or at least at the time that I acquired these boxes of it. Ten rounds. Next to be tested will be 124 grain full metal jacket. Step it up a little bit. Each magazine holds 17 rounds. Clearly, the Glock 17 is a very good, very reliable pistol. Um, not at all finicky about ammunition, unlike the Remington R51. In the interest of fairness to my Mark II Z ammunition, which the Remington R51 did so terribly with. Since I have almost 80 boxes of this unopened, I think I'll test it in the Glock. And we actually got I had one misfire, which was much easier to correct with the Glock than with the Remington. Uh, that's because the Glock, the clock, talk the Glock, the slide only has to move back. Hold on a second. Yeah, to cock the Glock, the slide only has to go back this far. If you get a misfire with a Glock, it's not necessary to eject the cartridge. On the Remington, you got to go all the way back to here. But on the Glock, that's it. And the round is still in the chamber, and you can try and fire it again. And as you saw, the Mark IIZ ammunition, there's nothing wrong with it. The Glock eats it. The Remington hates it. And I discovered I've still got 10 more rounds of the Mark IIZ left from that box. So I figured what the heck, uh, why not go ahead and touch them off. If anyone wants to see the head stamp, here it is. Hopefully you can focus on that. Let me load this map. Mark 2Z, submachine gun ammo, finishing the box. On 
didn't even try. It's a little smoky. Nothing wrong with it. Submachine gun ammo works well in a Glock. Here's that second target after being shot at with the Glock. I consider that to be more than adequate. And just for the record, that's that first target shot at with the Remington R51. Um, firing was from here, and that's seven yards. Okay, got indoor out of the rain. Now I already knew before the test began that the Glock would probably offer flawless performance. Uh, I was once upon a time, decades ago, I was working with an agency, but not for, but I was working with an agency that was among the first in the United States to acquire Generation 1 Glock pistols and I had the opportunity to familiarize myself with them back in the 1980s. Um, since then I've followed their progress. This is my first personally owned Glock 17 but I already knew what to expect. Uh, you're wondering why didn't I buy a Glock in the beginning and the answer is as described in the previous video, I like the Remington M51 as a concealed carry pistol and as you can see from this size comparison, the Remington M51 is substantially smaller than the Glock but it is in the same caliber and if you're going to carry a weapon concealed, uh, small is good. Actually, the Remington M5 R51 is what's considered a medium-sized pistol. There are much smaller 9mm pistols around. But I had a fondness for the M51, so I figured I'd try and purchase an R51. And I'm very happy to see it work with... 124 grain commercial bullets. Obviously I want to try some 124 grain hollow point bullets in it too, but I already knew that in the case of a Glock, and this is true of the Sig Sauer 228-226 series also, these guns will feed and operate properly with almost anything you feed them. As you just saw today, we went from one extreme to another, from 147 grain to 124 grain to, what is that, 60 year old British military surplus ammo. The gun didn't, didn't care. Fires them all. Uh, not so, as we saw in the other video with the R51 so far. The 124 grain full metal jacket, and I've got to pick up some more boxes of it, is the only weight shape of bullet that I've found or encountered yet that will function in the R51. I do not object too much to that weird full load, complete cartridge stovepipe. I'm hoping that's just a fluke of the break in period. I'll run another 100 rounds of the 124 grain through this. Hopefully, it'll stop doing that. Uh, an improvement for Remington, if you're watching this video, uh, go ahead and chamfer the corner of the uh, ejection port and maybe relieve it a little bit further back. Because um, I had many stovepipes with this weapon and obviously the cartridge case is still hanging around while the slide is still coming forward. Uh, that means something's hindering it on ejection. And maybe on this one, if, if the future 124 tests work good, 
I'll relieve the ejection port on this back another tenth of an inch and chamfer this corner here and hopefully that will reduce the number of stove pipes in it. Um, yeah, my opinion of the R51 went up a little bit because I was able to get through four, jam four magazines with no major problems uh, other than what was that one failure to feed which may be because it's still dirty uh, and the one stovepipe. I'm not sure if I dropped the magazine when I had that stovepipe or if it simply fell out of the weapon from my accidentally hitting the release button. Um, I need to look at the video myself and see exactly what happened there. But if you want performance in a 9mm, buy a SIG 228 or a SIG 226 or a Glock 17 or a Glock 19, you really can't go wrong. Uh, by the way, the Glock 19 is just a little bit shorter on both ends. Not as short as uh, the R51, but it's a little easier to carry and it does have concealment potential. Uh, no further analysis needed.